My next, welcome to everybody. My next guest is George Frazier. I call him Dr. George C. Frazier. He's the chairman and CEO of Frazier Net, a company founded over 30 years ago. Dr. George C. Frazier is a renowned networking guru, business leader, author, and entrepreneur who is regarded as one of the most, foremost respected authorities on entrepreneurship and building generational wealth and economic empowerment for the black community. He will be talking about his annual Power Networking Conference, plus give us some great value about how we can be successful in our own everyday life. Please welcome back to Money Making Conversation, Dr. George C. Frazier. Oh, God bless you. Good to hear you. <laughs> I love the, I've always, I've always loved the energy in your voice. Uh, hell, you motivate me and I'm a motivator. I, well, you know, I, that always a compliment because you know, you, you, it's like, you know, I'm sure when Michael Jordan got on the court and I call you Michael Jordan. Now, they ain't very shy, McDonald. I, I just throw myself to be a little bit, uh, I'm not even going to say LeBron. I'm not even LeBron, <laughs> but you Michael Jordan, Dr. George Frazier. Understand that, oh, man. Well respected in this business <laughs> of entrepreneurship because you all know, like now, entrepreneurs are some almost become a fad, just like the word branding has become a fad. But you know, you started this whole networking and the relationship before it was even vogue. Talk about the how it was when we started the Fraser networking and now how it is now, especially with social media being so prevalent in the process of networking. Yeah, that that's an excellent point, Rashawn. Uh, social media has helped all of us mm -hmm. to stay connected, to get connected, uh, and to leverage uh, more effectively our collective resources and intellectual capital. And uh, I, so I love it. It has really helped uh, mm -hmm. to spread the word about economic development and wealth creation. It helped us, in fact, to understand the, the rules for for financial success. I mean, I, I, I say there are three basic rules. There are three basic rules um, that will, if you're looking for financial freedom, if you follow these three basic rules, there's no way that you can go wrong. Rule number one, your rent or mortgage should be less than what you make in a week. I cannot tell you how many black people are house poor. Your rent or mortgage should be no more than you make in a week. So if you have a two household income, you combine the income for a week and your rent or mortgage should be no more than that. That's number one. Number two, only borrow money to make money. So yes, you can borrow money to buy a house because if you keep your house, it is going to make money. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're borrowing money to buy a car, unless you're turning that car into a useful and utilitarian tool to help you make money, get back and forth to work or do whatever you need to do, uh, that's a good thing. But it's a depreciating asset, Rashawn, because Absolutely. the moment you buy that car, if you turn that car around and try to take it back to the dealer to get what you paid for, you would not get it. It'd be a, a fight. It'd be a asset. fight on the showroom floor. <laughs> that, that's right. That's exactly right. Same thing with diamonds, Rashawn. Mm -hmm. You can buy you a beautiful diamond bracelet if you turned around and try to sell it back uh, to the jeweler. But what you just paid for it, you will not get it. So borrow money to make more money and figure out whatever you're borrowing money for, how are you going to get something in return for your investment? And that's what you expect. Uh, you expect a return on your investment. That's so that's number two. And number three, this is deep. As your income increases, your cost of living should decrease or stay the same. Stop living, brothers and sisters, above your means. Mm -hmm. Stop living, which means you're spending more than you earn. Stop living even within your means, which means you're spending everything you earn, um, and live below your means and invest the rest, right? So right. as your income increases, your cost of living should either decrease or stay the same. Do not raise your cost of living because you got to raise. Take that difference between what you were earning and what you're now earning and invest it. Don't spend it. And the, per the first person you invest in is you. Tithe to you right. first. Take the money off the top. Don't spend what you have to spend to pay your bills and then invest what you got left. No, 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 no. Invest in you first and then 
Uh, if you follow these three rules, there's no way that you cannot land on financial freedom. So and that's, so that's what, that's, and that's yeah. what we're all talking about, financial freedom, because the, we, really, right. we really that's found right. out how free we were not during this COVID-19. That's right. That's and, right. Uh, that's especially right. in the there's black six, community, the brown habits. community. Mm-hmm. Rashawn, there's six habits that will keep us broke. There's six habits that will keep you broke, right? Not talking about money. Right. Not to, we don't talk about it in school. We generally don't talk about it around the family table. That'll keep you broke. You've got to talk about money, understand capitalism, understand money. So talking about money will help prevent you from keeping broke. Talking about it around the family table, talking about it among your friends is more important than what, uh, what what's happening on Real Housewives of Atlanta. OK, mm-hmm. number two, failing to build an emergency fund. Now, we've all been taught that we need to save some money for a rainy day. Well, this is going to be a rainy two years. This pandemic, now I know everybody can relate to this. This pandemic has changed our whole financial mindset in terms of what we needed to have put back for a long rainy day and what we actually had put back. So failing to build an emergency fund for more than six months, I would look at it now for at least a year. What does it take for you to live, to maintain your standard of living for at least 12 months, right? And make sure that you have that as cash available to you. Number three, making impulse purchases. Let me say it a different way. I would rather carry a plastic bag with $5,000 in it than to carry a $5,000 Louis Vuitton bag with $100 in it. Stop making impulse purchases, right? Because that's going to drain you of your cash available. Number four, buying items you don't need because they're on sale. Now, I have to chastise my wife often about this. Donna, why do you buy? Well, it was on sale. I said, but you already got three of them. Yes. Right? Yes. So buying stuff that you don't need. Manage your impulse buying. Mm-hmm. And number five, paying bills late because of the exorbitant interest rates when you pay your bills late, especially those credit cards. Man, you look at the annual interest rate on these credit cards, and if you're paying the minimum that you have to pay each month, on the, you will never pay that credit card off. Yeah, that minimum you're is a trick move. Interest. That minimum That's monthly right. payment is a trick move. Woo. That's right. Absolutely. You'll never pay it off. Right. So don't pay your bills late. Don't pay the minimums. Always pay more. I I try to pay double to triple the minimum. If I have Same a good here. month, I might, I might pay 25 percent of what uh, of what I owe. Yes. So that's number five. Don't pay bills late and don't pay minimums as you, is the beautiful point you made. Mm-hmm. And number six, and the improper use of credit cards. The improper use of credit cards. 15 years ago, I cut up all of my, I have no credit cards. What I have are debit cards that are attached to my bank account, mm-hmm. Rashawn, mm-hmm. and I cannot spend any more than I have in my damn checking account. Mm-hmm. So you know what I'm thinking about every time I use my debit card, and I got I got three or four of them, because uh, I have d- various banks for various needs, but I can never spend any more than I have available right now. All right. So improper use of so these are habits that keep us broke. And we are also the most financially illiterate people mm-hmm. in America. Mm-hmm. Uh, we are at the bottom of every single statistic that matters in this country economically. And so we need to educate ourselves, educate our children. This is related to talking about money. And as a result of that, as a responsible leader uh, in this country, as you are, um, we started our Wins Wealth Building Centers um, to, to, to address financial illiteracy in black America. Because if the business of America is business, it is dangerous, Rashawn, and self-defeating to be financially illiterate. Therefore, education is the answer. The key to a well-rounded financial education is to align people's minds mindsets, their habits, their values, and solutions 
with the importance of the overall goals of black America, or according to numerous analytical statistics and studies and predictions, we will ultimately, if we don't fix our financial badass habits, right? We will be relegated to permanent second-class citizenry, and we will end up in a second slavery. So we developed uh, in uh, 2018 the WINS Wealth Building Centers and Curriculum to ad address, uh, among other things, the psychology, uh, the emotions, and our relationship with money in both the secular and non-secular uh, black organizations, both the church and, and other black organizations. And we're sharply focusing uh, on our deep-seated struggle with instant versus delayed gratification. It's one of the very bad habits that we have. And we, we're, we're struggling with uh, the basics of financial growth uh, to include, but uh, is not limited to the four pillars for the intergenerational transfer of wealth. That is the essence of our WINS financial centers. And awesome. we've got uh, over 20 churches already involved with our curriculum and with our program. And those four pillars for the intergenerational, I don't have time to unpack them. Uh, this is what people are going to learn at the Virtual Power Networking Conference, October the 28th through the 30th. Uh, through the 30th. Mm -hmm. But the four pillars, very simply, are the proper management of accumulated wealth so that we can stop reading about entertainers and uh, athletes that earn $100 million in their career and within five years they're either broke or in bankruptcy. The second pillar is real estate ownership, both residential and uh, commercial real estate is a cornerstone for the intergenerational transfer of wealth. The fourth one is business development. Uh, we are the consumption class in this country. Uh, white folks are the merchant class. They make stuff and we buy stuff. Stop doing that, brothers and sisters. If you sell something, sell something. In America, two things are going on 24-7. Somebody's buying and somebody's selling. Right? Uh, we're doing all the damn buying. So if you make cookies, so, you know, put them in a box, put your name on it, and sell it to somebody, right? right? If you live on a farm, take the manure, put it in a bag, put your name on it, and sell it to somebody. You can become an entree manure, okay? <laughs> Stop doing all the damn buying and sell something. This is extremely important. On this, I'll give one final little quote by Bishop Tudor. Bishop Tudor Bismarck, he wrote a wonderful book called Kingdom economics. Right. And I'm going to quote him. And he says, as black people, we have embarked mm -hmm. upon a new millennium. And this millennium brings momentous change. We see differences in every facet of society, cultural shifts, economic upheavals, political changes, and more. As believers, it is imperative, not only must we be spiritually sound, but we must also establish a firm kingdom economic foundation. We must now unlock the keys to economic empowerment. Well, end of quote, I concur with that. And so I'm recommending that the brothers and sisters out there, if you belong to a church family, talk to your pastor, get in touch with us, and put a WINS Wealth Building Center, it's a little license agreement, and, and use our curriculum and start educating your congregation. You'll have a better congregation. You'll have a more uh, a, a financial free congregation. There'll be better tithers. There'll be better givers. So this is a very, very big and important idea that must be sustained over at least three or the next three or four generations. So that's, that's, important. that's, the, that's important. Yeah. You know, yes. the, you know, for 19 years, the Power Networking Conference has been the home of black entrepreneurs looking to connect. That's important when I say connect, grow and prosper. Forbes mm -hmm. voted as voted it as one of the top five conferences in the world for entrepreneurs. They pride themselves on unique philosophy of networking, building a financial legacy for your grandchildren. And this is about the future. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting thing about it, I was just involved in something with you. ESPN and HBCU week in 2019, I had, it was a live event, George, and I had 3,500 students attend the live event college fair. Mm -hmm. This year it was virtual and, uh, and I was concerned about the response. Last year was 3,500 to attend the HBCU week college fair in 2019. This year, 6,125 pre-registered and 4,823 attended. I say that because if now I went from like a regional event, a city event in Wilmington, Delaware, to I like to believe a global event. Mm 
And I feel mm-hmm. that we can look at the negative side of what COVID is doing to brick and mortar conferences, but I feel it's going to be a blessing for your power networking that it is now virtual. Correct? <laughs> I, if I was in, if I was in front of you, Rashawn, I would have hugged you because <laughs> uh, you, you just snatched the thought and the words right out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Yes, there's downsides and there's upsides to everything, and the pandemic has changed us uh, a, a bit. Pre- prematurely into a virtual world. Yes. There's mm-hmm. no question about it. And it ain't going away when the pandemic is over. Because this is so convenient and, it, and and it's so easy. You can learn, you can connect with people in your bunny slippers and bathrobe. Okay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Virtually. Mm-hmm. And so this is why we couldn't give our live uh, virtual conference in Houston, Texas back in July. I mean, I would be stoned mm-hmm. if I took 1,500 people to Houston, Texas uh, uh, and they were, uh, uh, you know, in the red on 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 the pandemic. Right. So we had to turn it into a virtual conference, and now we are promoting it in sixty six countries around the world, <laughs> and we have already already three thousand people that have signed up for it okay i mean that's how awesome this is and you can we reach more people we can connect with more people we can yes. educate more people yes. we can encourage more people we can inspire more people it is awesome and it ain't going away and the reason i love it is because last year we launched at our conference the first virtual nation called Fraser Nation. It right. was a virtual, this is before the pandemic, so I'm not, you know, I'm not a soothsayer. I, I can't predict the future. I was not predicting a pandemic that would make everything go virtual, but I said, I think we could have a virtual nation, right? And so what is this going to do? It's very simply, um, we're going to provide access uh, to overall training and coaching and modeling that is needed by our citizens and therefore help improve the recycling of black dollars and intellectual capital uh, among our citizens and allies. It's going to be this massive database of top black professionals, business owners, and community leaders, right, that they will be able to access the intellectual capital. Uh, there will be access to the, the products and services that black people sell around the world, right, right. In, mm-hmm. in the entire Pan-African diaspora. When you look at the, 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 the businesses that we own and, 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 and we're not supporting like we should support, so this will help the connectivity of that, and it's going to provide this kind of a database and virtual meetings and virtual conferences and virtual uh, 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 um, uh, summits uh, and virtual workshops, right? Because virtual ain't going away. That's, now why, that's why I love it. That's, what, that's why I just said, yeah. because a lot of people that's don't right. understand that, is that you can't look at it as being negative, being negative because it's a brick and mortar. And the goals of FraserNet are simple. Help black people build wealth that can be transferred into generational wealth opportunities Opportunity right. for the future, help black people become the number one employer of black people in the 21st century to facilitate right. building a global network of Africans throughout the diaspora whose focus right. is personal and business excellent and using it to build partnerships, joint ventures, and strategic alliances. That's very key yeah, right there. Now, Networking. Right, and now the whole virtual thing has been normalized. Yes. Right? It's yes. been normalized. That's why I love it, George. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm, I am so excited for your brand because you know we stumbled upon because of the COVID-19 the real purpose because you know not that we didn't know we didn't know you know we were just doing what everybody do you know IBM Mm -hmm. does it all the big corporations do these brick and mortar but you had to be trained and the pandemic trained people to look at TV to Zoom Instagram Live Facebook Live so everybody's kind of like there now and so now Your brand becomes what it's supposed to be, a global brand, George. It's a global brand. There you go. Brand. There you go. There you go. There you go. No, no question about it. And with brothers like you promoting it, I'm telling you, this is very important. What you're doing, what you're saying, your reach, your credibility. Right. Um, Thank you. The way people trust you. I mean, this is this is this is this is the gold standard for how we get this out 
and used by our people. We've got to have people like you talking about it. And hell, hell heck, you you talk about it better than I do. I mean, <laughs> you know why? Because you see it. Yes. You see it. Yes. You yes. see yes. it. You're a visionary. Yes. You see it. You know what the possibilities are. You know that we have to do this. Yes. We don't have any choice. That's right? why I'm so and excited. So I'm, I'm so excited. Yeah, we, what we have to do is create the instruments, the vessels, and the tools for us to do it, and then move it through uh, the, uh, our, 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 our marketing and advertising, radio, television, social media system that is so targeted and so effectively utilized by black people mm -hmm. and it will happen it will work there's no question about it you know people it's really, are excited about it's really interesting because you know sometimes you you know in, in God that's all this is about God and looking mm -hmm. at his vision and then building on it because first it was in July brick and mortar right brick and mortar because we right. talked about it a year in advance we said I'm coming right. to Houston I said you know in Houston I got to be there for you joy COVID hit in March then we moved it to October 14th through the 17th still in Houston right. at the Hilton Americas okay right. now okay we are virtual October 26th through the 28th that means that we went from a Houston event to a global event. I want everybody to understand that. That means that you can be in Africa. You can be in England. Right. You can be in France. You can be in Mexico. You can be in Canada. And you now you can participate in this conference. That's right. And that right, there, that's right. That's why that's it's right. so important that we tell everybody this. I want you to take off your little narrow hats about how can I participate? You don't have to get on the plane. This has been conceptualized to be very network friendly for all the things mm -hmm. that he's always talked about. Meet millionaires, potential partners, investors, and build your network. Workshop speaks. All these things. Registration, student registration, all VIP registration, ultra VIP registration. All these right. things. Seminars. All these things are available now virtually. That's amazing that's to me. Right. That's some you know I'm, right. you know I'm fired up. I'm gonna tell you something because this yeah, Wednesday, yeah. this we, I'm, I got three Wednesdays, ninety thousand. I'm promoting every Wednesday, every two weeks. I'm promoting this. You better sign up. You better sign up. Better sign up because we want right. to get that number over ten thousand. That's right. I mean, just think about that. I mean, when's the last time ten thousand black people from all over the diaspora yes, were able to come together around a common vision? Right. With instruction, motivation, some of the best and baddest speakers and preachers on the planet. Uh, the Reverend uh, Reverend uh, Freddie Haynes mm -hmm. closes our talk every year. Jamal Bryant opens the talk every year. And, and I mean, we can just voice Watkins will be it will be there. Uh, the doctor. I just finished um, uh, recording the interview with Dr. Julius Garvey, the son of Marcus Garvey. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, an incredible interview that I did with him. So we, we can go down the list. It, it, it is just incredible. If you want to know more about the Virtual Power Networking Conference, just go to uh, uh, www.powernetworkingconference.com, www.powernetworkingconference.com. If, uh, if, in fact, you, you can't find a link or something, just email me. Mm -hmm. Just email me very simply at gfraser, F-R-A-S as in Sam, E-R, at frasernet.com. gfraser at frasernet.com. And I'll make sure you get everything you need to know uh, to, in fact, That's get uh, Dr. George C. Frazier. He's a renowned mm -hmm. networking guru, chairman and CEO. You're not emailing just anybody. Not an assistant. Dr. George C. Frazier, that's who you internet, renowned networking guru, chairman and CEO of FraserNet, a company he founded over 32 years ago to lead global networking and economic development movement for people of African descent. That's FraserNet, a belief that we should be in the game, not as buyers, but as sellers, people, yes. product, put your name on something, become an entrepreneur, telling you how you can become an entrepreneur. Putting a plan in place so you can win, not only just short term, long term, because that's what this is all about. Because everybody go out there, they want to do something, they don't have a plan in place. That's short term success. We're trying to create long term success at FraserNet. That's why it's virtual. That's why it's October 26th through the 28th. That's why he's always on my show. It's one I, I feel blessed that I'm able to bring somebody of his caliber on my show. He always be hyping me up. I be hyped because he's one of the few people I just I just let him talk. I just interrupt periodically, just drop some dimes, <laughs> remind everybody how gifted it is to even hear him talk like this. I 
put three of his life changing quotes on my Monday motivation with his picture. It was the highest like post of the year on my Monday motivation. What? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. I told you I was going to do that. Remember, I told you I said, yeah, look, yeah, I am yeah. going to promote you. I'm going. To, it was the most like post. It was incredible, incredible, because your beliefs and your values mean something to people. What I like to always say is that that's why I'm excited about the virtual uh Event Fraser Net this year because you're just a hidden gem. Your network's not saying that you're not unknown. I don't want to insult like that. But this virtual platform allows more people to participate. And just like I said earlier about the HBCU week we did with ESPN, Disney, and 3,500 students attended live last year. Wow. 6,125 pre registered virtually, 4,823 came to the virtual experience people are ready wow. for the change you are going yeah. to have an incredible experience mr frazier such a well, blessing such a blessing brother. such a blessing well, god bless you Rashawn. god bless you and and god bless all that you mean to us and 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 your servant leadership because you are a servant i mean you just are incredible in how you manage that and how you focus on that emphasize that it's all in your voice and in your spirit and so i'm going to close with giving the brothers and sisters out here a little tip on on how to build your passive income okay. how to build your back because it should not be a black person in america with a single stream of income mm -hmm. right like all of us should have multiple streams of income so we call it passive income so take your nine to five income if you, if you got a job, 97% of us have a job. Take your nine to five income and use that to fuel your side hustle. Okay, whatever that may be, sell something. That's your side hustle. And then use your side hustle to fuel the money you get from that, to fuel your investments, because you're going to get extra money and you're going to invest that money. I don't care if it's cryptocurrency, stocks, bonds, whatever it is, whatever floats your boat, invest your side hustle money and then take your investments and over time, your investments will replace your nine to five. Mm. That's the goal. That's the goal. That's the goal. My friend, I want to appreciate you. Again, uh, my newsletter goes out this Wednesday. You will have a banner in that. I got two more Wednesdays before October 26th through the 28th. That's the virtual Net conference. Originally was held in Houston. Now it's held for the world to participate. I love saying that. It's now being held for the world to be a participant. You gave me a new line. You gave me a new line, Richard. You gave me a new line. Like I said, it's a blessing, Dr. C. It's a blessing. Come on now. But again, That's thank right. you for coming on the show. And I, I, I got to do my job now. Jack, see, see, you always give me instructions, but you don't even know it. See, when you come on my <laughs> show, Dr. Frazier, you put me to work in a positive manner because I said, OK, right. I can. Right. I said, OK, you know, it's like it's like, you know, you the pope of entrepreneurship to me. You the pope now. You know, the pope mm -hmm. came to town. He then blessed mm -hmm. everybody with information. Now, guess what? We got to get busy and spread the word. So that my mission right, right now is to spread the word of Frazier Net coming October 26th through the 28th. You be, you be, no, it's 20, 20, 28, 28 through the 30th. 28 to the 30. October 28 to the 30. October 28 to the 30. Well, I apologize. I've been trading that out. I've said that a couple of times wrong. October 28th through the 30th. October 28th through the 30th is the date that we're going to do Fraser Net Virtual Worldwide. My friend, we talk soon, okay? Love you. Love you Keep too. doing God's work. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear more Money Making Conversations, please go to moneymakingconversations.com. I'm Rashawn McDonald. I'm your host. I need to replace 